Everywhere you look today, machine shops are modernizing, they're innovating, they're moving to new and improved systems. Well, one of the best things you can do to take yourself to that next level is automation, right? This cell right here is at the forefront of what the modern manufacturing shop is gonna look like, and you definitely wanna make sure that you're a part of it, not on the outside looking in. And in order to show you what that looks like in a shop environment, we're gonna take this raw stock right here, set up the robot, and end up with this part right here, which is the same part that we machined for our Boombastic 2024 event, and also have machined ourselves thousands of times over the years. All right, so here we are at our halter robotic system. We got a whole bunch of pucks of 316 stainless steel, and we're gonna show you really from the ground up how to get this system up and running in an optimized way for you and your job. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice is that this is really an integrated system, right? That means that all my material handling and my robotics are really kind of self-contained here, and that may be different than what you might see if you have a cobot system and sort of a pallet of material next to it. This is an all-in-one system making for better efficiency and better use of your robotics overall. First thing first, we gotta go ahead and load up all our material on our cart into our turn stacker here. Now, this is actually pretty cool. You can open this up really easy and really quick. In fact, a lot of what you're gonna see kind of centers around that idea of ease. So we just open this up and this will actually open up to just over nine inches. We can drop our material in. We'll go ahead and close it, just like that. I'll bump it open just a little bit more to give a little bit of room, right? And now I can load the rest of my parts in here. All right, now this machine setup is known as a turn stacker. That's a little bit different than the machine that you'll see over on Tyson's SMX. This is designed really for parts that one can stack on top of each other. That's right, we turn it and we stack it, right? Now, another thing you'll notice that this system is really designed for is parts that aren't really that tall. So I can stack a lot of parts in here based on this height right here. If I had a part that was, let's say, four or five inches tall, I may want to go over to the Universal. That machine has a grid pattern layout, and that's designed for parts that, one, don't stack, or two, are very tall. We do have 12 stacks that we can use, but you're only gonna load up 11 of them because you need an empty stack in which to place your finished parts. Now you do need to let the robot know which stacks have material, and for that we have this little flag up here. Flip it up, you do that for each stack that has material, and when this table rotates around, our proc switch here lets the control know that this is full of raw stock. All right, so the machine is loaded up with raw stock, and now we're gonna go ahead and get to the next step in the process, and that's programming the machine. This is extremely easy to program. This smart control really breaks this whole process down into just a few steps and parameters that will get you up and running. And Tyson has already actually done a very good in-depth video on what that programming looks like that you can check out here and you should check out just to get a real glimpse and look at how easy this process is. You have an operator side here that shows you what your work handling looks like. This might be different if, for example, you say you have a universal robot, but it's all nice and visual and free to see. And you also have a production queue right here. So we can program this robot to either run continuously until we run out of material, or we can set ready work pieces. So let's say you want to run five pieces, 10 pieces, 50 pieces, whatever number works for you, your part, and your shop. If you want to come back and inspect or whatnot, you have that versatility right here in the control. Now, apart from that, you have the programming side, and this really is just a few steps. We define basically our raw stock size, our finished part size, there's a couple parameters related to our jaw depth, and just a few simple commands to give to the robot. In order to function properly, your machine does have to communicate with the robot. In this case, it's a simple M20 command that you have to put in your program. That will activate the robot. The robot will then tag back the machine when it's time to machine more parts, and through that back and forth, you get this seamless automation process. So one thing about this program, it is designed to begin when I have a finished part on my sub and an op one ready for a chuck transfer on my main. So we're gonna grab a couple pieces of material, we'll machine some parts, and we'll get ready for that first robot motion. 
One thing you want to keep in mind is you will need some sort of auto door system on your robot setup. We use CNC auto door that's hooked up to most of our machines here. In fact, to be honest, even without the robot system, the auto door is pretty handy. We had one back in California and we liked it. Let me know when the machine was ready. A lot of real benefits there no matter what. And just so you know, this CNC auto door as well as all the halter robotics you're going to see today are available on our store at titansofcnc.com. Uh, with that, let's go ahead. We're going to jump right in here. We're going to make some chips. So I wanted to stop here and take a second to discuss a couple things to help you be successful when you're implementing a system like this. If you want this robot to run well, you really need things in here to run well. It doesn't take much. If you get a couple chips embedded in your jaw, you're gonna come back after 50 parts to have 50 scrap parts, and we don't want that to happen. So as you can see right here, we have a classic example of chips wrapped around the part. Now, sometimes we can get rid of that with the parameters, but sometimes these are just unavoidable occurrences of the machining process. So for here I'm gonna use another tool I'm gonna to come down I'm gonna pull that off the part so it won't be a problem when it comes in and does a chuck transfer or a robot grab or whatever I might be doing now another thing you want to keep in mind is what I like to call speeds feeds and longevity you don't want to be in here changing inserts all the time if you're in here having to check this tool check that tool everything's breaking all the time because your parameters are all out of whack you're not really doing yourself any favors so make sure you look at that and one final thing to consider is you might want to have some sort of tool load monitoring system like we have here on the DN. This will let you know if a tool has chipped or broke and a lot of times it will shut down your machine before you have a catastrophic run of parts while you're not here. So with that, let's get back to machine. Okay, so our machining process is done, and now it's time to go ahead and start the robot. Now the first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna rotate our table around, and it's gonna look for an empty stack for finished parts and a stack full of raw parts to reload the machine. It's gonna go ahead, it's gonna bring both stacks up to the top. There are lasers in there that lets it know when the raw stock is at the top. It's gonna go ahead and preload itself with a piece of raw stock. The complete cycle is a multi-step process. The first thing we have to do is we have to go in and we grab our finished part from the sub. The doors will then shut and we'll complete a chuck transfer, moving op one to its op two side in the sub. The doors will reopen. The robot will then take the raw stock that it has. It will put it in the main. It will come back out. The doors will shut. The whole machining process will start again. And while that is happening, the robot will take its finished part that it already grabbed, return it to the finished stack on the robot, grab another piece of raw stock, and then park itself, waiting for the whole thing to rinse and repeat one more time, two more time, three more time. You get the idea. So one thing we have to consider with any robot system is obviously safety. You can see I'm here, I'm behind both a physical fence and a virtual fence. There's a laser system right here that defines a space that I cannot walk into. If I get too close in that system, this robot will slow down immensely. And if I get even further into that, it will stop the robot completely. Now the good thing is I actually can go in I can stop this robot, go in, check out things, maybe look at a part, look at the robot setup, whatever I want. I can come back out of the fence, I can clear the alarm, hit the play button, and it will pick up right exactly where it was and continue on with the process. And if you haven't guessed it by that bright yellow color right there, this is a FANUC powered system. Well known, established brand that is reliable to the point to where I have the faith and trust that I can walk away and do one of the other 10 million things that need being done in a machine shop other than standing at my machine loading parts.
We know that as a shop owner, you're always looking to get ahead. And we also know there's a lot of ways you can go about that. So you might be asking yourself, why would I want to invest in a system like this? And indeed, it is a big investment. But the reality of the situation is this is the future of manufacturing. And if you're not going to find these on your floor, you're probably going to struggle a little bit going forward. We all know it's hard to find workers. We all know we have 5, 10, 15, 20 different things to do in today's shop environment. And this right here is going to simplify your life. And remember, this isn't just a one robot, one machine system. As we've shown you before, this robot can pick up and move to other machines, thereby really making it a two, three, four, or more machine robot system. And that's just one of the many reasons why you should consider putting it in your shop so you can be part of the future and not left in the past. And if you are interested in seeing this setup on your own shop floor, make sure you go over to the Titans of CNC store where you can find this halter system, you can find the auto door, and even more to help you manufacture hands-free. So thanks for checking out our video today. Make sure if you're more interested in that programming aspect, go check out Tyson's video. And again, just check us out on all the different platforms that we have available to reach you with modern manufacturing tips, tricks, and techniques. We'll see y'all next time.